name is Danielle McKinnon and I am the founding director of Eat Sleep Pride. And before we begin, I just want to give you a little bit of background. For me, the smell, touch, or even a glance of a horse creates a wonderful wave of happiness and belonging inside. Every horse is unique and has thoughts just like we do. I have developed an environment where people and horses can work together in harmony. And my ethos is firmly about welfare and enjoyment for both horse and rider. To establish this, I have become fascinated about the communication techniques we apply as owners to deal with our steeds. I don't believe any horse is born naughty, and with the correct management and care, we can create a safe, happy, stable environment for everyone. We need to educate ourselves and develop our learning, whether we ride once a week or own our own horse. They deserve to be understood and given the chance to flourish and grow. I am passionate about helping people build and improve relationships with their horses and enjoy figuring out how horses think and why they behave the way that they do. My goal is to build and strengthen channels of communication between owners, learners and their horses. Today I'm going to run through some non-ridden training with the help of the beautiful Cisco. Um, and I want to start with a really simple task that you can do now um, that really just involves a hat and a dry level space. So we're going to assess confirmation as this has been really crucial in helping Cisco after he developed traits and training issues with his current owner. Um, Cisco's issues could be described as napping, but really if we break that down, you know, he didn't trust humans enough to leave his herd. He was quite sore in places and, you know, potentially, well, definitely a bit confused as to, to the signals he was being given. So we start by gaining trust in the ground to develop that relationship through grooming. And then we, you know, we can have an overall look at the horse and assess, you know, the his confirmation. And so we kind of know what to do in terms of stretches, what, what will be beneficial and how to build a plan for his groundwork or his ridden sessions, or even his groundwork before his ridden sessions. So to begin with, we look at his overall confirmation. Um, as I've said, work in a dry level area. Uh, confirmation relates to the shape or the structure of the horse, um, and it's important because it can impact on the horse's athletic ability, essentially its way of going. Um, there are five main criteria to evaluate when you're examining. So if you look at the balance, the structural correctness, so essentially how his limbs look or his skeletal structure looks. Um, not that you can see that, but you can obviously feel and see if things look a bit odd. Um, how he moves, which essentially you want to look as him walking away from you, coming towards you and from the side. Um, what muscle in he has, is he weak along the back, has he got strong hindquarters, and what type of horse are you dealing with? Um, if you've got a horse with a short back and a long neck, then you're in luck. Um, if we take a look at Cisco, his overall condition is good. His eyes are bright and he is responsive. However, he has upright pasterns and an upright shoulder. It's not particular. It's not massively upright, but it, compared to the hindquarter, it's significantly more upright. He's got a long back and a good depth in his hindquarter. Essentially, you can see both of his breeds. So he's a Spanish horse crossed with a thoroughbred. One breed is a higher step in action. And the other is bred for speed and agility and they've got much more blood in their temperament. Um, again, I say this is important because it helps us paint a picture of how to plan Cisco's exercise routine. You know, we've got to take into account the big overtrack that thoroughbreds have to make sure that we work in a rhythm where we can alternate tempo and use transitions. It's, interestingly, with Cisco, we can see at some point there has been some sort of overflexion or he hasn't been using his sling muscles correctly because he's got this dip in front of his wither. Um, there's still a little bit of work to be done on Cisco, but it's definitely improved a lot since his arrival. So really all I want you to do is just take a little bit of time to look at your horse. There's, I mean, so much more we could go into. Cisco's got very traditional Iberian feet. They're quite flat, like pancakes, um, generally quite robust. But again, he's got this sloping hindquarter. Um, definitely still needs to build up a little bit of top line, but is starting to come through and stretch out his neck. So it's been lovely to work with him. And just taking in mind, he's always going to have a higher action because of his shape. So, you know, we're not going to force an outline that isn't suitable for him. Um, and we're going to work a lot on relaxing so we can relax enough to let the muscles stretch and work correctly. Um, so there's so much more we could talk about. Um, 
but today we're going to run through a few things. But what I really want to achieve is that you take time to assess your horse's confirmation at rest and understand why he or she may behave the way they do. Think about your workload and is it correct for your horse? Are there other training methods that could help you achieve your goal? Don't be disheartened if your horse has not got the best confirmation. It just limits his ability. And just think about what you're asking of them. You know, every horse is a place, whether it's a ridden discipline or non-ridden, you know, enjoy finding that out. And then you can have a think about their behaviour rather than necessarily thinking they're naughty. But is it a balance issue? Do they find something difficult? Are they more muscled on one side? And just really spend the time getting to enjoy your horse and listening and looking and taking the time to appreciate how he feels, how he looks, how he stands, how he appears to you and you greet him. Yeah, and just enjoy it. You know, we love our horses and we all want the best. So we're going to move on now. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate some exercises that have been great for Cisco. Um, really, it's been to try and move his shoulders and transfer the weight. Um, you know, what I really want to say is, to begin with, when I bring any sort of horse into the school, I don't want to just go straight onto a circle. I want to spend a bit of time walking beside them, ensuring that I can stay by their shoulder and the contact I have through the lunge line is the same as I would have through a rein. I want to work on moving his shoulders. So... I walk with Cisco and I make lots of different shapes and I make lots of different turns and I walk faster and I walk slower. But, you know, I'm either in front of him or I'm parallel with his shoulder. Um, and I'm always really aware of my body positioning and, and, you know, making sure he stops when he's asked, goes when he's asked. You know, I, I want him to work with me and I'm not a fan of just standing still and, and making them go round in quite those circles, essentially because lunging is a form of riding. So... I then really want to start to change directions so we're not staying on one circle and I'm able to do that without stopping and starting. Um, it also allows me to work on my body position and it teaches Cisco to move his shoulder and it teaches me about essentially being out of his way. So really what I do when I want the horse to move is I bring the horse towards me, I shorten the line, I open my hand I get out of the horse's way so he knows I want him to step out to that side. And then I place my stick at the shoulder to ensure that he transfers the weight over. And then we can go back walking rounds in circles together. So throughout this video, I've seen with Cisco that he finds it sometimes a little bit hard. And he gets stuck when you ask him to move the weight. But by the end, you can see that he's working with me. And he's nice and relaxed. And he's licking and he's chewing. And he's really starting to stretch out and... What we're seeing is that the pole is actually becoming vertical with the wither and we're able to look at his rhythm and ensure that he's landing in balance. So it's just a really nice warming exercise, but it does take a little bit of time. Um, sort of common mistakes are people don't get out of the way, they don't, they're not quick enough and the horse starts walking rounds on the circle. So spend a little bit of time with your horse, bringing him in, moving him out, bringing him in, moving him out. Then from this, you know, I've got poles set up. There's three end to end and we're going to walk over them so they can backwards and forwards from side to side. Um, and you can really make this as simple, as difficult as you want. If you approach the poles head on, it's easier than when the horse is parallel. Um, it can be done on long reins. It, it really helps improve movement through the shoulder and enables and encourages side to side movement through the ribs. Um, 
It also teaches coordination as the horse judges the step over the pole. So as you can see, when I was lunging, I know that he's going to spook when I come round the corner because he doesn't know if there's a tiger behind the bush. So, you know, at one point I made the circle a little bit smaller. I thought about my environment and I started to walk round and then I used a pole to, to sort of change his mind and get him listening to me and thinking it's not so scary over there. But all the time keeping this slow, relaxed rhythm and making sure I praise him when he does something right. And when I'm coming to the poles, thinking I don't want to rush him, you know, if he throws his head up and he bangs the pole, he's, he's out of rhythm. So really what I'm looking for is nice rhythm. So, you know, the other thing you could do is you could include increased distance in the poles if it's too hard. So you can see at points, um, Cisco sometimes find that the turn quite hard at the end, which actually, if you look back to the turning on the lunge, it's just something he finds difficult. It's almost like he gets stuck when he moves the shoulder. He just needs to learn to go forwards with it. So he's pretty relaxed over these poles. And even though our angles aren't perfect all the time, what's nice is we're keeping a rhythm and you can clearly see the transference of the weight. And you can see him thinking about what he's doing and you can see how I'm working with him Rather than leading him, I sort of guide him and then I'm there. But the contact is still the same lightness I would have through my reins. Um, another sort of alteration you could do to this is you could increase or decrease the height of the poles. Um, again, just be careful. If your horse finds it difficult, he may rush or trip and stop going forwards. Um, you know, one of the biggest things I can say is just take your time. And, you know, stop if the horse appears tired um, before you try and build up. You know, progression is something you build up to. So I'm really chuffed with the way Cisco has behaved today. I really like some of the moments we've had together and how he's been looking and chewing. I like how I've managed to keep my lunge line for the most of it, but I've, I've liked how he's kind of shown you the difficulties that you could sort of hit head on. Um, I just think, taking the lunge line, spending some time thinking about the space that you've got, what can I do with the equipment I have, what is it I'm really looking to do, what would be nice to my horse, where can I have a little think about my energy and my positioning and how can we bring this all together and you know this is a great exercise we're only using three poles so already we've managed to put quite a lot into a session and it's noticeable that Cisco has definitely enjoyed that and you know, has worked with me. So, yep, again, enjoy. Look at what you've got. Don't make lunging boring. There's plenty of things you can do. Squares, ovals, circles, smaller, bigger. But just work on staying at the shoulder and knowing when to use the whip. Your whip's almost like your wand. You don't want to be using it all the time. You just want to be showing the horse what you want him to move. And, you know, if your lunge line's going too baggy, your horse is falling in. And if it's going too tight, your horse has fallen onto that outside shoulder. So you might want to do things like triangles or diamonds or squares. But again, just, just make it fun and learn to move with your horse. So as we're walking back to the yard, you know, another thing I always look for or listen is a quick call to the horse. You know, is he rushing? Do you have that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four? Is he even? And you know, it's a really simple exercise. All you have to do is listen. Obviously, in a school, it's difficult, but for example, if you're going around the school and you can hear your horse's footprints, then actually you know that they're a little bit on the forehand. So when you're in the arena, when a horse is light, you shouldn't really hear their footfalls. But a really good way to work out 
straightness and balance and rhythm, just walking them to and from the field, you can tell a lot about how they move. Okay, so for the last part of this video, we're going to stretch this go off and we're going to use, well, we've got treats, but treats or carrots as the bait, which I'm pretty sure he's going to enjoy massively. So we're doing it after because they're most effective when they're performed after the horse's normal workout. And it's just because the joint mobility and the muscle works better when the body's warm. Again, you want to have an area with good footing and a treat that allows you to keep your fingers safe, really important. Um, and during all stretches, really the handler should be close to the horse. Um, essentially with stretching, it's repetition. You really want to repeat each stretch three to five times. And between stretches, you really want to allow a couple of seconds for the horse to relax its muscles. Um, really, you want to try and hold that stretch for 10, but you know, don't force something, but you don't want the horse to grab the treat. You know, it's an exercise to help the horse work correctly and, and build muscle tone. And I've seen an amazing results with carrot stretches when done properly. Um, so we're going to do three today. There's loads. We're going to do flexion, extension and lateral bending. So side to side. So we're going to start with the lateral bending. Um, it might be difficult for some of your horses. So increase the length of each stretch as the horse becomes more familiar. Um, and as the horse progresses, extend the stretch from the level of the girth, then down towards the hip, towards the hock. Um, you really want minimal rotation of the head. The stretch must come from the base of the neck. The ears should be level. Um, remember, you can turn to different points of the horse, but as I said, it's the progression. And you want to ensure that you do it on both sides. And you want to ensure you do it again three to five times and hold it for either five seconds at the start, building yourself up to 10, 15 would be amazing. But yeah, there, you know, it, it's really important that you think about what you're doing. You're not just letting the horse turn around and grab, you know, yourself, if you quickly flip around with your neck, you know, it's not that comfortable. Um, so yeah, it's really important to spend a little bit of time just ensuring that the stretches are doing their job and the muscles are able to relax slowly into what you're asking the horse to do. Um, so then your flexion stretches are essentially your bowing and you want the handler to stand near the horse's girth and you, you want to be facing the same direction of the horse. And again, we're using the bait as encouragement. So the horse to stretch down to the level of the chest to start with, and that gives greater flexion in the neck. Um, the horse should really bend evenly through the neck and back and the head should be level and the back should round. So you should see the back lift. Um, you know, it's quite subtle in some horses. It can be quite dramatic in others. And then you can go from this stretch to the chest to then between the knee. So, you know, as you progress, you're going to extend the stretch between the knees even further. And you can even go down to the fetlocks. And when you get that low, some horses may elevate their heels of their front feet or slightly bend their knees. And this is normal. I don't know if you've ever tried to stretch over in child's pose but you know it's the same for us sometimes it's not that easy and we've got to make adjustments to to get that stretch over our back so you know it's the same theory you're going to make sure the horse is level we're going to make sure that we give the horse time in between stretches and we're going to make sure he holds it before we essentially reward him with the bait um we're going to then finish with the extensor stretches, so they're quite nice, so they're asking the horse to stretch. The handler, again, should stand facing the horse. Again, you're using the bait to encourage the horse to extend, extend its neck and stretch in an you know, outwards direction. 
upwards or outwards but you you want to do it to the side or you can do it straight out in front but again what you don't want to do is you don't want the horse to move so you're not you don't want the horse's front feet to move you want the horse to stretch out to take it so this is something Cisco finds a little bit harder because you know he wants the treat like every horse does and actually it's, it's easier if he moves his feet so you know it's something that that we need to work on and it's something that we've been working on and his ridden and his groundwork which you've seen today anyway um there are so many stretches and you know i've only picked three because they're you know what i feel is relevant to cisco and as to what we can do today and what you're able to store so just really want you to go and have fun with all the parts of this video stay safe just think about some of the things that you can maybe do when you're sat there looking at your horse and thinking that maybe after lockdown you want to go and try a new sport but actually is your horse ready to do it or do you know do you get a right sore right hip when you ride and have you ever thought oh, I wonder is, is that me or actually is there something you know that's not quite right on my horse I mean we know they're asymmetrical but actually sometimes they can be a bit more built up and we can do things to help with that and stretching and relaxation and walking and you know listening to your horse's footfalls Really good things to think about, you know, when you're going into the yard. Again, like we said, listen to the horse's football. You know, does it have that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four? You know, when you're in the school, is it light or can you hear the hoofs pumping round the school? So again, is that telling you the horse is maybe a little bit on the forehand? Um, yeah, there's just so much to think about. So I, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's great talking to you. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this. Um... I hope it all kind of made sense um, and any questions, get in touch. Thank you. Bye.